Welcome to another edition of the Petty Podcast. This is your host, Stephen Petty. We have an interesting topic today. It's very timely. Governor DeSantis yesterday had a news conference, and um, he basically said that he's going to make monoclonal antibodies available statewide to people to treat COVID-19. We thought it would be interesting to have a, a podcast on that topic because many people aren't familiar with COVID-19 monoclonal antibody treatment, and your host actually had it, so I'll share some of that with you as well. Here's uh, a copy from the New York Daily News of the uh, announcement by Governor DeSantis uh, regarding the fact that he's uh, going to make an emphasis for using uh, treatment of monoclonal antibodies for people with COVID-19. So what are monoclonal antibodies? What was he talking about? Um, Well, first of all, Originally, they were a cocktail of products made by Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, Inc., also known as Regeneron. They're located in Terrytown, New York. And most recently, Eli Lilly has their own cocktail. And this is a graphic from Regeneron uh, that I borrowed that basically shows what happens. And basically, antibodies are um, used to basically tag things that the body doesn't want present so they can be removed. In this case, they're, uh, they're using special mice that are, are producing specific human antibodies for targeted illnesses and, in some cases, cancers. So here's a, another graphic that uh, comes from uh, the JAMA um, patient page. I thought it was interesting and helpful um, because they define these terms as well as show some graphics. So you see the spike protein on the left part of the graphic and it's injecting itself into a host cell where it's trying to replicate. And what happens is these antibodies come flying in and they grab a hold of it and they basically identify this, uh, an- this spike protein as somebody that shouldn't be there. And by identifying it as such, then the body uh, uh, cells come and take it away. And that's how your body defends itself. So an antibody, by definition, is a protein that's naturally produced by the immune system in response to an infection. So it's tagging things it doesn't want present. A monoclonal antibody is is sort of an artificial antibody developed in a lab, in this case by uh, specially designed mice. And it enhances the body's immune system to uh, protect against an invader. I thought this graphic would be helpful to see that. So uh, what are these as far as uh, you hear the term monoclonal antibodies, but what the heck are they, and when were they authorized to be used? The very first time we heard about this was when President Trump received uh, an infusion under the compassionate care request for a product that was not authorized either under emergency use or otherwise by the FDA. And this was the Regeneron infusion that he talked about and then said he felt so great the next day. Since then, there have been two emergency youth authorizations, we call these EUAs, one for Regeneron and one for Eli Lilly recently. The, in November of 2020, the Regeneron cocktail, um, which consisted of two antibodies known as Regen-CoV-2, was issued an emergency youth authorization. Um, Another, uh, FDA did lower or have the dosage required uh, on June 4th, very recently, of 2021. So that's a new order out on that original November 220 um, emergency use authorization. And very recently, in May 20th, the FDA issued an EU for a second cocktail, also including two antibodies, to Eli Lilly. So basically, you have two products out there now, both having two antibodies. There are limitations on who can get these and, and, um, and their usage. And the key point to be made here is that 
they must be given early in the disease progression. This fact is not known by most. Um, in other words, they must be issued within 10 days of the onset of the disease. So you need your doctor to give you an order if you fit the right categories so that you can get to it before it's too late. Because if you're hospitalized or you're under uh, receiving oxygen, they will not issue an order for you to get this treatment. That's something most people don't realize. So who's allowed to uh, get this treatment? Not everyone. Uh, you have to be over 40 kilograms. You have to be older. You have to have some sort of conditions, overweight, kidney disease, hypertension, your immune system's compromised, sickle cell. There are a whole list here. Um, but many, many people obviously would be uh, in a position to receive this treatment. So I thought it would also be interesting to share with you my experience because about three weeks ago I received it. Uh, I will have a podcast coming up. Uh, we've uh, recorded it. It's in production on my experience getting COVID. Um, but as part of that, um, I was aware of and kept track of the science that this was a, an available treatment for me. My first observation was it was hard to get the doctor to issue it. It took almost 30 hours. I called them, told them I'd like to have it. They said they would, that yes, I was a candidate and they would issue an order and I should hear from the hospital, and I never did. So I called them again and they uh, did finally do that. And of course, meanwhile, the clock's running because I was in day four and you don't want to get further sick in such a condition that you can't get it or be too late. The cocktail that I was given was the Regeneron one. Uh, it's an IV. It must be given in the hospital. Uh, it took about two hours to uh, get the treatment. They put an IV in uh, just above, in your arm, just above your wrist. First, they put some saline solution into you. Then the cocktail's introduced, and then they finalize that with some saline solution. I think mainly to sit there and watch and make sure you don't have any negative reactions. Um, one thing I thought was curious is even though I was recently infected with COVID, I was simply escorted through the lobby of the hospital and into a treatment room, no special precautions, avoiding of other people or PPE. I thought that was sort of interesting being an industrial hygienist and exposure expert. Um, in terms of the treatment, it did seem to help. Uh, within a day, uh, my fever and all my symptoms were reduced. I had no fever uh, the day after nor any time after that. I must add that I was also taking some other things, including ivermectin, D3, zinc, vitamin C, and a Z pack. The last observation, and maybe the most important one, is that uh, few people were actually getting it. Uh, in central Ohio, where I was at the time, which has a MSA, a population of over 2 million people, there's only one hospital that was giving this effusion, and only one nurse who was giving the infusions. And as she indicated to me, I was one of three patients that day, which was typical. That was a little strange to me, thinking that only three people a day or so were getting this treatment. I asked the nurse, who and she was excellent to work with, why so few people were getting it. And this was her answer. She said, one, the doctors don't seem to be familiar with the treatment and or they are not ordering it. Interestingly enough, hundreds of thousands of doses have yet to be used, um, and, the, and the government has purchased uh, 1.5 million doses uh, as of uh, the first part of the year. So uh, I did find on the Internet this statement that said demand for these therapies, which are given as a one-time intravenous infusion, have been disappointing. So that all kind of ties together that for some reason this treatment isn't being utilized. Now that's not an end-all and all for treatment, but it's certainly one of the options that appears to be very promising. So perhaps Governor DeSantis press conference will help at least making the treatment option more known, and hopefully this podcast will help you understand some of the limitations, the need to make sure you ask for it early, you insist on it, because if you wait too long, you can't get it. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful to you. We really appreciate you listening, um, and we hope you turn in for our next podcast. We'll have one up at least a week and maybe two a week. Thank you much for listening. Have a great day.